Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, smart eyewear, so kind of technology to improve our mind or brain. And in the upper corner you see a small demonstration, so I'm currently wearing a Jin's, Jin's Meme prototype uh, that uses electrodes, I later on describe a bit more in detail about it, uh, and uh, it recognizes my eye blinks right now. So uh, it can recognize eye movement and uh, up in the corner you just see the, my current eye blinks. I will turn this off because it might be a bit distracting during the, <laughs> during the talk. So you can just not blink during the talk. <laughs> yeah. Don't think of blinking. Uh, so, uh, as you know, my background is in this activity tracking or activity recognition uh, part. So, you know, strapping a lot of strange sensors onto the body of people and trying to figure out what they are doing. And we use this for maintenance or other work. And what we see now is more or less this uh, proliferation that industry is picking this up. So you see more and more uh, devices or um, uh, everyday uh, kind of bracelets or other things that track your calorie expenditure, that tracks how many steps you take, or you can get a smartphone application that can teach you, you know, how to run or uh, if you want to run a marathon or so on. And uh, um, we, we are doing actually um, uh, this cognitive activity tracking uh, recognition part, so we think, you know, what is next in in this in, in research? And uh, I gave a talk about this beforehand. So using you know optical eye trackers also on, we try to understand what's going on in your mind. So we try not to track you know how much steps you take, but maybe in this case how much words you read, or you know are you concentrated or not, and these kind of things. So we try to get towards a. Uh, uh, maybe uh, Fitbit for the mind, so giving you, you know, the overview of uh, your reading life or also more general about your uh, mental fitness or so on. And uh, if you think, I, I believe that uh, if we look into the future, um, in the past, a lot of the major breakthroughs in uh, uh, technology were based on our physical wow. limitations. So overcoming our physical limitations. And so, you know, we, we can go faster, we can build higher, we live more comfortable, we live more longer. But I believe that in future, um, it will be about our cognitive um, limitations. So the kind of next centuries or so on will be, we will see breakthroughs about uh, overcoming our cognitive limitations. And what you can already realize or what you can, you know, hint for this is also that uh, the US and also Europe is putting a lot of money into this. So there are two large projects already on the go. Yeah? Sorry, can you explain what these projects are about? Uh, so uh, the Brain Initiative tries to map, the, uh, or tries to understand the brain better. So they do uh, um, mostly, I think, neuroscience stuff. So this, yeah, I shouldn't say, uh, disclaimer, uh, I was part of the initiative that was uh, voting against the Human Brain Project, so <laughs> for ICT, and we didn't get the money, so uh, um, I see the other one a little bit skeptical. There's also critics criticism currently from the EU uh, on this other one because they want to simulate already mm -hmm. and I think or at least part of the project wants to simulate already and I think this is not we are not there yet so so I think you know kind of we need first an understanding of the neuroscience but I, I have the feeling that they're getting around to doing this because there's there was kind of a, a big discussion right now in the EU what to do with the Human Brain Project and I think also they will focus more on mapping uh, uh, neural circuits and trying to understand first uh, what's happening in the brain with you know specific stimuli and stuff like that. So, But both following both of them would be quite interesting. So. And, um, and also if you think about technology, in general technology already makes us smarter. So, uh, because it changes our perception of reality. So, I, I just want to give you one small example. So, this is not about cognitive activity tracking yet. This is just uh, taking uh, what happened in the last couple of years into account. So, if you take a professor from the 60s, 1960s or so on, you know, well-traveled, um, 
uh, well informed and so on, and compare him to a teenager, a 13 year old girl today with an iPad. And one way to assess smartness or intelligence is to just ask questions. And I would argue that it's very, very hard to come up with questions where the professor will look more intelligent or more smart. There are a couple of questions, you can think about it, but I think it's very, very hard already today, you know, kind of with this gap of 40 years or, you know, or, or 50 years, where uh, this girl just has the advantage of uh, direct access to information. And she doesn't have to, you know, do really much critical thinking. She just has to decide, is the answer I find on Google relevant or, you know, trustworthy or not? So, and I think this gets interesting. And I wonder, you know, also in the future, why don't we, you know, amplify this effect by trying to understand in real uh, scenarios what makes us smarter. So in real life, what makes us smarter using sensing, using kind of the same technology we currently use and tracking our steps or other things. And uh, we are working towards this and that's why I call the talk Smart Eyewear because I think now we are getting to, you know, an interesting development where we can actually really wear uh, things on our head that are unobtrusive. Because we started out with this um, SMI eye tracker, so these kind of really big devices that are uh, maybe battery runtime of uh, four hours, five hours or so on, and they don't look so nice. But we are moving slowly with our technology towards using you know, Google Glass or also using tablet and smartphones. But then now uh, new also Chins Meme or other smart eyewear devices. And uh, we are getting to, you know, if you look at this one, so the one I also brought with me, you can uh, hand it around, so if you want to, just don't bend it together because uh, of the electrodes, but uh, it kind of looks like normal glasses. And you see there are the three electrodes, the two on the ears, and that's it. And uh, it, um, yeah, this is a collaboration with, uh, uh, with Inami Sensei, so we are directly working with the Jins on the, on the development of these products. So, uh, so that's also why I shift my workplace from Osaka to Tokyo, so to directly work with uh, Inami Sensei on the device. And, um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't have to say too much. So, I mean, the interesting part about glasses is it's, you know, kind of unobtrusive to wear or very easy also for older people or other people to understand. So also for Google Glass, if I gave it to my grandparents, it was very, very easy for them to understand. Oh, it's like glasses, so I have to be a little bit careful with it. But they didn't have this hindrance or this uh, perception of, oh, if I get a computer or an iPad or uh, an iPhone, what should I do with it? So they didn't have this, uh, this, this hindrance. So the two, two chins memes, so the, the, uh, the glasses I'm, uh, I'm currently uh, yeah, giving around. Uh, the interesting part, or in general for smart eyewear, the interesting part is um, a lot of our uh, inputs or so on, sensory inputs are in the head, so our eye, our ears or so on. So it makes sense to work computing there. The biggest problem so far was that we were at a stage where anything we wore there would be too clunky, you know, adding, adding battery or so on. But now with, with, with the advances in battery and also processing power, we get to a stage where we can really wear things on our head. And I think this will change a lot about this cognitive tracking or also this augmenting the human mind. Because uh, as you saw with this, as you see with these devices, they are relatively light. You don't even realize that they might be smart glasses. And if we get to this step, it gets really interesting. So for the Chins meme, uh, interesting part is they are very different from Google Glass. They are not a full-fledged computer. They are more or less just a sensing device. So what you get is um, electrodes, they use three electrodes uh, on the eye and the two on the ears currently, but we might change the electrode setup to figure out your eye movement. So you can get left and right movement, up and down, as well as eye blinks with it. And uh, they also have a motion sensor, accelerometer and gyroscope in them. 
and what I believe kind of what we can do with this is okay. um, these cooperative aids or assistance are just the first step. So if we implement this cognitive activity tracking, I think we can really improve the collective intelligence of society because we can understand for a large part of society what makes them more intelligent or what makes us more intelligent. We get information about habits like concentration and these things. Now I have a small demo I can't show you right now on, on Shin's meme, but it should also work on this one. I just will show you on Google Glass. Uh, you you might remember last time I showed you the um, the uh, maybe I, I quickly do this again. Uh, last time I showed you the um, blink detection on Google Glass. Um, remember this, so this is the infrared sensor facing my eye and uh, every time uh, I blink it counts up uh, once. And what you can actually now do with this is, I mentioned this last time, uh, but uh, I, we didn't have it implemented yet, you can do some very basic activity recognition. So right now I'm just dis uh, distinguishing between two classes and you should see relatively soon one of them. Uh, it should not say reading. Ah, okay, good. Uh, it should say talking and reading. Usually it does not mix up the... Where did I put my mobile phone? Uh, so if I start reading... Um, and so on. And also if I start talking, so the difference is um, if I start reading, uh, my eye blinks are slower uh, and also my eye moves left right. So I'm not sure why it <laughs> in between says reading. Usually it's quite accurate. Um, wait, I can show you again. Uh, <coughs> so if I now move my eye left right, so it recognizes some blinks, but it should not recognize blinks because this is just my eye movement left right under the distance sensor. So that's what you can recognize also while doing reading. And when talking, usually you have a higher head motion as well as uh, more blinks. So you have double, double the amount of blinks, so you can easily uh, segment uh, talking from reading usually. So let me go back to... Yeah, so, um, so so we are slowly getting there. So kind of reading detection might work, and you might get an overview of you know how fast you're reading or these things. But then the more interesting part will be you know how do we detect something like concentrated reading, or how can we detect your focus or your mental state? And we are also working on that. So. And for that, we need uh, um, uh, brain, uh, uh, brain act act activation sensing. So what you see here is an FNIRS device. Um, this is a medical one, uh, near infrared spectroscopy. What it does is, in this case, we have 42 channels. And uh, it detects uh, the oxygen level of the blood between two channels. Mm -hmm. So it uses uh, a near infrared light. And uh, depending on what it gets back, it can recognize hemoglobin actually. So, and what you get back are you know kind of nice, uh, nice color images. So uh, this is the activation of the prefrontal lobe. So uh, red are uh, highly activated, blue is low, uh, low activated. And what we did with this, we recorded some data with uh, um, stationary eye tracker as well as uh, the Jeans meme glasses and uh, uh, the FNIRS device. Here is some parts or some reading uh, task, you know, and then you see on top, you see the, the eye trace of the student and uh, on the lo uh, lower part, you see the brain activity synchronized with the eye gaze. So there's also a little trick, the 
uh, brain activity is a bit so because it's uh, oxygen level in the blood it takes uh, up to three seconds so you have to do you know some time adjustment and so on but with this you can get really uh, workload um, so a cognitive load with this and uh, what we actually so, what, so, what we so want sorry so that that recording was of a student reading yeah so you, what you can see is in real time, so where the eye gaze is as well as uh, which brain region is activated by the... Uh, Was it a native English speaker or a no. Japanese? <laughs> you see. Well, you no, no, see. I, yeah, I would you guess Japanese, see. but I don't yeah. know. Like, no, no, you should see. I mean, uh, a native English speaker would reach, reach much faster. So oh. you would uh, just see kind of, you know, he would, he would actually be done with the sentences right now. <laughs> so for me, it's relatively easy. I mean, I'm not sure. Can you see? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's not, not such a bad English. It's not such a bad. He's he's okay. But no, because sometimes what what sometimes gives us trouble with the uh, with the uh, uh, recordings, uh, English recordings, is uh, uh, some students who are not so good jump back and forth. So it's, it's relatively hard, especially if you want to do something like word count or other things. It's a pain. I just I wonder yeah, no, what no. it actually looks like for a native speaker because I feel sometimes when I read something, I mean obviously your eye is kind of going left to right, yeah. but I feel like sometimes you pick up words from within the paragraph before you actually get to them, yeah. and so I figure your eye must be probably jumping around a little bit and you don't really recognize it. But I don't usually. Know. A bit, but so far what I, what I saw is for for native speakers usually you have you know uh, around one or two fixations per line and then jump to the next line and then there are some people I mean I looked into the the speed reading thing and uh, yeah we're still trying to do this but uh, it's difficult more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, uh, because especially this um, RSVP method, this method that just flashes you words. Uh, we figured out it doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, anyways, <laughs> what, what do you mean by it doesn't work? Um, so it works for texts. I mean, did you know this spritz or so on this online? Yeah. They, they, there was something yeah. in the news or so on. And if you try it on their website, it worked perfectly because they used a very very simple text and they repeated a lot of the contents in the text several times. So you could catch very easily, even you know, with you know, 500 words per minute or, or 700 words per minute, you could easily catch the contents. As soon, I mean, I think maybe for something like news or for something which mm -hmm. is you know, very, very simple and content, content, it can work. And if you have you know, multiple iterations of the, 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 the comprehend or what you want to understand in the text. But for anything that it's just a little bit complicated, your your comprehension score goes towards zero. Mm -hmm. So exactly. we, we tried with a couple of students and uh, uh, also in, in Germany and US and uh, the comprehension scores were really bad. Is it a factor of the speed or just because you only see one word? Because it's not, yeah, if you just see one word, it's just not how you would read. So, so uh, it's just, you know, kind of not, not natural reading. And it's very, very hard to, to, to get uh, or to grasp. We are currently looking in, what I would like to do is kind of augment speed reading, so give you hints or help to read faster or read better, but it's more complicated than we thought. So currently a, a PhD student from, from, from Stuttgart, uh, Tillmann, he's working on that and he tries out kind of, uh, usually what you do for speed reading is you, you use your finger and you, you start, you know, moving faster and so on, and these kind of things, and he's currently trying to re-implement these parts. And I think he had a study where he at least showed that this works better than, you know, just flashing words, but, uh, but it's still not, not perfect. So. What if you flash, like, a part of a sentence and just one word, it work better? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe. But I would, I would assume that the uh, kind of kinetic stimulus and giving you the overview over a paragraph or so on would, should work better. Because then you have this maybe peripheral, you know, you kind of match. I would assume what you want to do is match um, words, like the, f the, the, the contour of the words, like object recognition, you know, or like we do face recognition. I'm not sure if this 
can work, but if you can do this, then it's then it's better, and then maybe you get a better comprehension of the text. But I think you know, kind of the speed reading approaches might be good for specific types of texts. But yeah, we're still working on it. But um, it was yeah, at the beginning I was a little bit too naive about <laughs> uh, oh yeah, we can do this, and um, yeah, let's see. Uh, and now back to the the brain, um, the the brain uh, sensing. Uh, part. So what we try to get at, and um, that's the interesting, so it's not only about, you know, nice heat maps or so on, but uh, what you see here is uh, the brain activation do, during a dual NBAC problem. I'm not sure, NBAC uh, is a kind of a memory game, so you get uh, two stimuli, and you get another two stimuli, so either flash, uh, um, uh, kind of a, a square is flashing on the screen at a specific position, and you hear a sound, and you do you 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 get this again, and if you have if you remember for just one iteration, so for one of these stimuli, it's uh, uh, equal uh, one back. So this means, oh, was it the same flash uh, on the screen? Was it the same sound? And you have to press press the button, either the same sound or the same same uh, visual stimuli. That's one back, and then two back. You have to remember two back. And uh, three back, you have to remember three back. So you see, already two back is getting quite complicated. So if you're not trained, you can try. There are some online things you can try and back. And uh, uh, and what you see here is kind of you know for the first uh, task, uh, it was relatively easy for the participant to do it. Um, and then for the second one, it was more difficult. For the third one, even more difficult, and for the last one, that's the interesting one. Just person just gave up, yeah. because it was too difficult. <laughs> and that's that's for me the interesting part. So can we not with FNES because you know we I don't want to adjust forty two uh, probes <laughs> to somebody, and uh, the device itself is not really portable. Uh, but uh, can we detect this stage with eye tracking or with the chins meme? I don't know yet, so we're working on it, I hope. And more interestingly, can I predict the next state? So can I say if somebody is working, you know, on, is somebody working on this level or on this level? So can I make the task a little bit more, more difficult for the person? Because if we can, of course, we can, I think, optimize learning. Because I think, you know, kind of from, from cognitive science or so on, you should stay at the most challenging uh, situation where you, you're not getting frustrated with the, with the task. So, yeah, that, that's it more or less. So, uh, now if there are some questions, uh, remarks, while well, descent or so on. <laughs> yeah. Could could you have like this kind of uh, infrared sensors on the glasses itself? Like, would that work? Uh, this would not work. Uh, you need to. So one of the problems is you really need the contact with the skin. And also, you know, uh, sunlight or other things. So one of the problems we had for the recording was um, we used um, we used the stationary eye tracker down here. Mm -hmm. And as you know, maybe stationary eye trackers use infrared light. Mm -hmm. And uh, these things are kind of round. So it thought, oh, there are a lot of eyes, and I shine <laughs> infrared light to them, which was quite bad. So we wondered, you know, kind of from the recordings first, uh, what's, what's happening or what's going on. So uh, there are some portable FNIRS uh, devices, so kind of, you know, just two channel. Uh, so and I think maybe it's possible to get something uh, suitable out of it. I mean, what we saw right now is uh, with FNIRS, you can get a good prediction, of course, I mean, workload is kind of ground truth, but you can get also good prediction on the, the language skills of the, the students. Mm -hmm. And we wonder right now if we can get the, the FNES down to two to four channels. Mm -hmm. So kind of su just selecting the most interesting channels mm -hmm. and using them for prediction. And then you could wear it, but you would need to wear a headband. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it depends on if you want to wear one or not. Mm -hmm. But with uh, the eyes, you mm -hmm. cannot. You, you, with uh, with glasses and so on. But if the glasses are touching your face, can't the sensors be in the glasses, like in the frames? It. So it should touch on the uh, bit higher from up. below, yeah, yeah, higher up. So I don't think it's like giant really possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you can. Uh, if, I mean, if you're wearing Oculus Rift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm just yeah. saying. Oh, no. 
Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. So if you wear a hat <laughs> or <laughs> a hat like this, this should be possible. Yeah. yeah. Unfashionable. Yeah, it depends <laughs> on the fashionable. Yeah. Mind reading hats, I can get it to somebody. <laughs> Expect the gadget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in whether you feel like, I could see it going, but like your answer being yes or your answer being no to this question. Um, do you do, do you feel that putting the camera into Google Glass has hurt what you're trying to do? Like, are people now really opposed to the idea of putting anything on their face? Because I had never seen this Jin's mean glasses before. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, I wear glasses. I would totally wear those. Like, I almost want. Why didn't you just make that? Why did you put a camera in there? Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure what happens with Google Glass. I mean, I just want to, in your research. Like, has it yeah. been a benefit because mm. it's it's moved the state of the art forward? And yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, mm, it's hard to say. I'm, it's really difficult to say because I, I get a lot of these. I mean. In not not so much in Japan or Asia in general, but in in Germany you get kind of a very feeling wearing glass. People look at you strangely. Yeah. And uh, now also in, in in Seattle, so we are just at Ubicom. Uh, what was interesting at Ubicom, for example, so last year there were a lot of people wearing Google Glass, mm -hmm. and this year there were still a couple, but not so many. So I'm I'm wondering kind of you know about the public perception. I haven't been I uh, haven't been wearing glass outside of the conference like or so on. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what's happening. But I think you know if you go towards the Chin's meme one, I don't think it's a big issue because people won't recognize that yeah, it's smart yeah, glasses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they adopt it or not, I think this depends on the application case. And if can pe if people can make a good application case, I mean, currently I'm trying out a lot of those, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> kind of trackers, uh, job one up, but also you, maybe you, you saw this one, the misfit, the misfit, yeah, yeah. Misfit China. I'm really tempted by it, to buy it myself. This is quite, I think, from a from a hardware what perspective wise, it's really what nice. What what is this? Uh, this is also a step counter, so nothing oh, else but a step counter. Uh, same same functionality as the drop one up, but just from a I think hardware design perspective, it's really well made. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think so from from comparing them, I actually I like the drop one, not because I mean I really dislike to wear anything on my wrists, mm -hmm. and I think the smart. So for me, this uh, watch. smart watch thing is you know sorry, but. <laughs> I don't care, uh, but uh, I mean the the but Apple Watch. If they are able to get heart rate, yeah. it's interesting. But heart rate you can also get from glasses. Right. You know, you can get from behind the ear or so on. Actually, maybe easier than from the wrist. Mm -hmm. But that's the 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 misfit, the round thing. Is um, it's you're you're using it as like a buckle thing at the moment. But yeah. because it's round, it comes with like a or you can buy an accessory that's like a watch band. So if you yeah. want to wear it like a jawbone up or yeah. a, a more standard tracking device, you can do that. You can also wear it as a necklace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think from a kind of hardware, like, and it has also a watch. So if you tap, it's maybe hard to see, but you get can get how many steps you took, and afterwards it gives you the time as well. As kind of a nice, nice yeah, gimmick. Super cool. super cool. But what I actually like about the jawbone, the 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 device itself is not so nice. But the software uh. is so far, I think, the best I saw. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, um, there, there, there are actually two things. So one is, um, uh, how do you say? So for, for wearing it, I like to wear it also just for alarm purposes. Mm -hmm. So I, now I go back and forth between Tokyo and Osaka. And I like to sleep on the train. Mm -hmm. And with this, I can set an alarm. You know, and uh, if I set an alarm on my on my what uh, on my uh, smartphone, yeah. usually I don't hear it because you know, and I will you know kind of also other people will hear it and you know these kind of things. If I set it here, I really feel it. Wow! And you know, so I use it for the smart alarm. And the other thing I like is, uh, so you you have a reason to wear it not for activity tracking alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is interesting because this makes you wear it even you know if you. 
you know, don't want to track yourself. And then the next part is about long-term behavior change. The, the misfit and also the Fitbit or so on just give you an overview on how many steps you took during the day. And what the jawbone at least tries to do is it tries to mine your information. So for example, so last, uh, last week I was in Seattle and um, because of the travel and so on I got less sleep. So it told me like, oh, I saw the last four days or five days, you've been getting not enough sleep. Oh, and now I give you a challenge. Go to bed at 11 o'clock <laughs> today. Are you in? And then if I pressed I'm in, it would give me a notification b before 11 o'clock and tell, tell me, oh, you wanted to go to bed. <laughs> that's cool. And that's kind of because that's that's if you if you look into you know behavioral science or so on, it's important to get reminders, and it's important to get instant action for something. You know, you need to have something where you can instantly say, uh, "I want to do this," and that's something at least the chalkbone tries. I mean, this is the first time I saw this, uh, but you know that makes the device actually interesting. So. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if other if other uh, activity trackers or so on pick up on that it would be nice. But for the for the for the question actually, so for the Google Glass smart glasses thing, I'm not so sure. So I also I'm looking forward to the next version of Google Glass. Oh, there is a next version. There is not the next version, but I heard. So this is not <laughs> from people from from Google X, but I heard that people at Google X are working on. The next version. Something cheaper. <laughs> I think cheaper, and I, I hope more towards normal glasses. I think Google Glass paid, uh, got the money back just by the advertising it gave to Google. <laughs> yeah, but money is it's not about money. Yeah. I mean, no, but I'm just saying yeah. uh, so the, the research effort was paid back in just simply the marketing value that raised from Google being everywhere in the news. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but I think it's not only about this. I no, mean, sure. I think really in a, I'm not sure if Google makes it or so on, but I think uh, really that the smart the smart glasses or in general smart headwear or so on is really an interesting market in the future because you can you know kind of detect anything you want about physiological signals or a lot of physiological signals on the head. And exactly. if you manufacture something nice, I think. Um, yeah, and this is kind of also, so Jins is, is cool. I was surprised that Jins would make these glasses because they are not really a, 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 a kind of hardware company for, for electronics company or so on. But also having eye movement especially is, is very interesting because you can get a lot of mental states and other things about, about yourself uh, using eye movement. So, yeah, let's see. That's awesome. No problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm very interested in <laughs> your topic, and uh, uh, I have three comments. Uh, and uh, uh, the first is uh, eye tracking, and uh, eye tracking for education uh, is very interesting topic to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you mentioned the English uh, language learning uh, mm -hmm. is can be detected by eye tracking or uh, brain sensors, and. Uh, for that research, uh, like Google Glass or Jeans Glass or Brain Sensor is very extensive and not uh, for many people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm wondering if eye tracking can be done by the image processing uh, from the movies uh, taken by the uh, laptop camera, for example. And uh, in that case, accuracy is a big <laughs> problem. And so, uh, is there any case uh, using a cheaper technology uh, to get the eye tracking information for some application? Yeah, so it depends on, so So actually we tried, this is something I think I showed that the first talk mm -hmm. was here, we tried to do eye tracking on mm -hmm. tablet, mm -hmm. so using the front facing camera. Mm -hmm. And it's working so so. So it depends highly on the person, depends on the lighting, mm -hmm. and you cannot. The, the biggest problem is the transfer function from the eye gaze to the screen coordinates, mm -hmm. because this is very user dependent. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as you mentioned, price, I would assume that the Chin's meme is mm -hmm. relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know about the prices yet, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, if you look at the device itself, so you you just have uh, uh, five electrodes, mm -hmm. uh, accelerometer, gyroscope, uh, Bluetooth mm -hmm. uh, chip, and I think an FPGA inside, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So I think from a price perspective, mm -hmm. this should not be so expensive. So I think this is viable because also in general, I think EOG is viable is better than uh, optical eye tracking for the case of, of um, if you talk about the cognitive tracking or something like that. If you're not interested in where in the scene a person is looking, but if you're interested in eye movement in general, uh, then the EOG is nice because uh, uh, it gives you just the eye movement, so the direction um, and uh, eye blinks. But uh, you can sample in a much higher rate than with optical eye tracking. Yeah. You could also imagine that, like most language education, I would think, mm -hmm. occurs in a school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you can convince mm -hmm. a school mm -hmm. to purchase these, mm -hmm. yeah. then they could just give them to students when they come into a, the classroom. Mm -hmm. You just put them on during the class, and then you take them off when you leave the class. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't necessarily need. Yeah. So, so, so one idea I have. This is somehow uh, professors don't like the idea too much. So my <laughs> colleagues don't like the idea too much. But one idea I have for for the Jin's meme is I want to equip uh, uh, several classes with the device, and then have a ranking for professors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so because you can easily get sleepiness because uh, drowsiness, uh, and also if somebody starts sleeping, so you can have a ranking for w in which class uh, uh, do students fall asleep the most or feel tired the most. But somehow, Maybe yeah. You could have like a live well, live my colleague, live. colleagues were not, not, not so happy about it. Real-time Yeah, real-time sure. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so real-time tracking, yeah. <laughs> so wake up. I remember yeah. that was an issue in Germany, right? Uh, that teachers get votes from the students. Right, and, and uh, online uh, also, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah. 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 French, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But it's not official, it's like... Not official. Not not official, but uh, the websites were yeah. quite this is quite. Complain about that. Yeah, yeah, it's also sad. So I think in a couple of schools, also in Germany, they they try to ban uh, smartphones and anything you can connect to the internet because of not not because of that, but kind of that videos of the teacher pop up on Facebook and stuff like that. They're scared about this, but uh, yeah, I think. Uh, but the real time feedback would be also something. I think that's 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 definitely interesting. About uh, uh, eye movements or so on. I mean, you can also do e quite evil things with this technology. So of course, you can also go the other way around. I mean, you can maybe try to do grading of students based on you know the eye movements or things like that, or you can figure yeah. out somebody is not paying attention or things like that. Is that evil? Hmm? Are you saying that's evil? Maybe that's maybe evil. That's yeah, depending on which side <laughs> you're on. <laughs> As a student, I would love it. Yeah, but not if the teacher. Knows. I think you know, for for, 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 for my for my for my side, I would like to get feedback for myself, but I don't want the teacher maybe to know. I want the teacher maybe to get an aggregate of the students in general, so seeing oh how interested are they in the topic or so on. But I don't want to give really personalized feedback. I had this uh, when when I showed this uh, this. Is iPad eye tracking to a, to a, a teacher who was in in one of those uh, education councils in the U.S. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Oh, cool! Then I know when uh, because they have you know kind of some some uh, some classes that are equipped with iPads." Mm -hmm. And then he said, "Oh, cool! Then I I know how much reading each of the student did <laughs> on the book assignment I gave mm -hmm. them." And that's something. Hello, hacking. Yeah, yeah, I would not. I don't have uh, a like, problem with that, but, but yeah, I am not so sure. I mean, I, I would be okay with it from a parent and also student perspective if you really get an aggregate, like okay, you know, no, eighty percent of the students read the assignment. But but I've taught classes, and I don't yeah. care that much what the total. Like, I want to identify the students oh, who need yeah. help. Like, ah, oh, okay. Okay. Like that's why I would think, like both from yeah, a student yeah. perspective, I wanted I want the teacher to know when I need extra help because sometimes it's embarrassing to say, like when I studied when I studied Japanese going into classes, 
and being really bad at Japanese and the other people around me are much better, it's embarrassing to say, like, I can't oh, read this. Yeah. Oh, okay. but, but, I don't know, maybe... I could s believe that other people have different opinions. Uh, the heart, the heart of the problem might be to be able to conceal nothing. So, no matter if you want to show that you are active or not, you're not able to do that. I.e., uh, you wanted to go to a party the last night and uh, you don't want anybody to recognize. Uh, <laughs> might be a case, right? Uh, where you don't actually want to, put some to, to, to show it to the other people. I, I guess, yeah. I'm thinking a lot about it, what I said before about it being something that you get when you walk into the class mm -hmm. and then you give back when you leave the class. Mm -hmm. I guess once you start talking about like an iPad that someone has in their home and then it's kind of tracking them <laughs> while they're scary. there and knows if they didn't do their homework because they went out. Like, yeah, I agree. That's creepy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it goes further, like... Uh, uh, some teacher thinks it's good to I'm not go into that. Usually, it's not that extreme, but it has shown good results if I hit you, if you are not paying attention. So let's start hitting the people that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's shown that this does not work. I know that. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say it. That, uh, uh, that, uh, it has been shown that uh, I don't, I don't evolution part is of that <laughs> It's pretty reasonable to assume that evolution exists still. Some teachers teach different things. Right? Yeah, yeah, but uh, so, so at least the hitting part or so on. I think so could you use the electrodes to send electric shocks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I was thinking about. Uh, um, yeah. Anyways, this so the video is off the wall. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no. So I was thinking about. I, I'm not really sure if it works, but I was wondering all, a bit about. If you look at experts, they look at uh, something very, very in a very specific way. So also, if you have native speakers, they read in a very specific way the English text. So for me, it's easy to to figure out just by looking at eye gaze. If is somebody expert, or you know, what is the level of, of expertise or so on? Is he maybe native speaker or not? And I wonder what happens if you induce the eye gaze. Yeah. So if you if you say, uh, oh, you know, I want to learn now reading, be it code or be it English text or whatever, and you induce the eye gaze of somebody who's an expert. I'm not sure if it, I wanted to check if it actually works, if you can do what it. What do you mean by inducing? So you, you use some electrodes to, force so, the for you force oh, the right. eye to move. Mm. I'm not sure if it works with electrodes. I mean, usually you can use muscle st stimuli. So uh, I know for the, there's this um, is this Inami Sensei or is this I, mean, I don't know. This was Rikimoto Sensei from Tokyo University. Mm -hmm. What they did is using electrodes on the yeah. on the arm to stimulate muscles, yeah, uh -huh. and then you can uh, can use uh, it's called what is it, is it uh, processed hand. Or so on, uh, and then you can play an instrument, even though you don't know anything about ah. playing the instrument. Well, uh, actually, my my friend is running that company. Oh, <laughs> okay. And, uh, uh, actually, my lab lab mate uh, four years ago, and uh, uh, in uh, Lake Moto Lab, yeah, uh, oh. gra graduated, and then and uh, he he is making the uh, machine uh, to uh, give a stimulus to a muscle wow. and. Uh, to manipulate the user's hand, and wow, this is for cool. rehabilitation and for training. Yeah. So, uh, and if mm -hmm. this is the case, uh, this, uh, if uh, muscle works uh, in this way, maybe I guess, what I guess. Uh, yeah, I think it, it will be a bit more complicated. I think it will be a bit more complicated because I'm not sure how the muscles or how you can get to. Just like stimulate the mouth to speak Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Question? Uh, uh, okay. I, just, I interrupted Hiroshi before. Yeah. He had yeah. three points, yeah. and he only said. Sorry. So I'm speaking shortly. And uh, the first question is uh, because uh, beside my work, uh, I'm working for an uh, NPO for education for uh, relatively poor uh, students. And so uh, if I can uh, use any technology uh, for the students, uh, uh, who cannot go to cramp school or uh, private schools. So uh, uh, I I tracking uh, for it, uh, in a cheaper way 
uh, would work, uh, I thought. And, and the second one is the uh, uh, brain sensor uh, for my hobby. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I'm paying to a Kickstarter and, and uh, bought a brain sensor with 18 electrons. And uh, I'm thinking how to use the <laughs> 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 application. And uh, I'm thinking uh, for the uh, uh, workers, for the blue workers, uh, if the, uh, uh, and uh, I, I give the, uh, how, how to say, I let the blue workers to use the uh, main sensor uh, for the whole work. And uh, at what time? They are tired, or at, the, at what time uh, they are concentrating uh, on their work. I think uh, this will work because I'm working for a factory uh, and uh, I'm getting the factory data and analyzing uh, the sensor data. And uh, there are uh, many accidents occur, like uh, after the lunch time, for example. <laughs> and in that case, I'm thinking the brain sensor could work to <laughs> check their concentration levels. And once we can trace that, uh, we can uh, give some notification to them. Can, can, you, can you do recordings in your company? No. <laughs> um, in, in my company, I, I'm not sure. But in okay. my client company, no. No, okay, okay. Yeah, there yeah, are some regulations. Yeah, yeah, I wondered about mm. uh, how but you want to test. Mm. Because this is, uh, if, if you could have yeah. done uh, recordings, uh, mm. maybe, you know, beginning of next year or so, or I can also include <laughs> you with the chips. <laughs> but, uh, but the problem usually is uh, to get the clearance for doing the yeah. recordings. Yeah. For, yeah, for yeah. brain sensor, so for it's EEG, so yeah, yeah. Yes. so for this, so I, I started looking into EEG a bit, but one of the trouble is uh, yeah. if you do a lot of motion, mm -hmm. so if the workers mm -hmm. uh, uh, move a lot, mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot of uh, mm -hmm. motion artifacts in the EEG oh, signal, yeah. mm -hmm. and then it gets sometimes difficult to filter. Mm -hmm. If it's, uh, is it a dry electrode? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So dry electrode usually is, is mm -hmm. problematic. Mm -hmm. And I saw it works well for some people and for others it does not work so mm -hmm. well. So so this is so one of the issues. Oh, so so, so I would, in the fixed. <laughs> Yeah, so I would recommend I mean one thing you can try I'm not sure about maybe the electrodes won't work for mm -hmm. eye movement because of the filtering or so mm -hmm. on. But you can try to attach them to mm -hmm. uh, to the eye. <laughs> for positions, and I think uh, this might, at least for, for tiredness, for fatigue, it will give you enough information. So you should have uh, four electrodes <laughs> here, and one, <laughs> one for, for ground, so kind of one, it will one over here. affects the user. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I mean, it depends on how you, if you, how, how, otherwise you have to also wear some, <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, yeah. some head, head mask or something. We are running out of time, sorry, but yeah, um, no if you're staying a little bit after, we can have yeah, a few yeah. questions to privacy, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm staying around. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, guys. <laughs>